So the purpose of this video is going to be twofold. I'm going to show you how to turn the word moon here into shapes, and then we're going to use a vanishing point that is above our word so that you can actually see how it looks when we use the top portion there. So I'm just going to go ahead and go into my letters here and just show you how to make those into shapes because this is a different type of font than what we've used so far. So you can absolutely look up any type of font that you want. You can make up your own. You can keep things as neat and tidy and even and exact as you want, or you can make it really fun and whimsical. So you can see here, I'm kind of changing up exactly how I use those lines. It's completely up to you exactly how you use the line. If you want to keep everything perfectly symmetrical, that's fine. If you want to change things up a little bit, like say I want to make this uh, kind of have an opening in it. I can make this O uh, be open a little bit here if I want to. And then add in the thickness around that N. You can use capital letters, you can use lowercase letters, you can use a combination of things. It is completely up to you. So that might be the way that I have decided to write the word moon. And then I'm going to erase the letters that I had originally, originally had in there so that I am left with only the shape letters, the three, the block letters. So again, you can use a ruler if you want to for any of the lettering steps, especially if you have straight edges and you want them to be very neat and tidy. The exact type of letters you use should be picked to sort of match your visual pun so that it makes sense with what your visual pun is. So now my vanishing point is above my letters here. So I'm going to go from the corner to the vanishing point. And on this M, if I do that, this line starts inside the letter. So I'm not gonna draw that one because remember, since my vanishing point is above the letter, the main part of the depth that I'm going to see is going to be the top. Now down here, my line starts outside. So I'm going to draw that one. And then right here, it starts on the inside. Here, it starts on the inside. At the top, it starts on the outside. So I'm going to draw that. And then this corner, I'm going to go ahead and draw back as well, and then this sort of outer curved part, I'm gonna draw because it starts outside my letter as well. So those would be the lines that I would need for the linear perspective portion of my M. Again, this is gonna be parallel to the front, and then on that diagonal line, it's gonna curve down right here so that it's parallel to this part. And then this is gonna come out from diagonal line to diagonal line, parallel to this part. They're not going to connect here because this part of my M technically just goes behind this part. So they're gonna overlap a little bit. And then I'm gonna bring in the side here because I do actually see this side because of where my vanishing point is. It's a little bit to the side and above. On the O, for instance, I might only see the top because it's almost directly below. So then here I'm gonna have this line come in parallel to that curve that I have on the front portion. And then I'm going to erase those diagonal lines because I don't need them anymore, which is why once again, it is very important to draw those lines as lightly as you can. because part of the sort of magic, so to speak, 
of linear perspective is that you can tell that it recedes into space and makes sense, but you cannot see the vanishing point and you cannot see those extra diagonal lines by the end. So it just looks like it's a volumetric letter that recedes into space and it looks and feels correct, but it's sort of a visual trick to the viewer because they cannot necessarily see how you have created that depth. So once again, the O is going to be a curve here that is parallel to the front. And I'm not going to see really any of the sides, but I am going to see the top of the bottom portion. And remember where this is, it's going to go across. And where this is, it's going to go across. So you're never going to see the top and the bottom at the same time, but basically they're going to switch. So that you're seeing the top of the top, and now down here, we're seeing the top of the bottom, but then on the sides, the front of the O just overlaps that point. And then on this O, because I opened it, I can see part of the top here. This corner, if I went to the vanishing point, would start inside my letter, but this corner starts outside of it. And then my next line is gonna to go to the outer edge of the curve. And then I know if I did it on this outer edge, it would go through the letter. So this is going to curve up so that it is parallel to the front of that part of the O. And then I'm not going to see the side. It's going to be a little bit weird because of the angle there. And then this one is going to curve, or not curve, go straight parallel here. And then I am going to see a little bit of the top of this part of my O. So this is going to come across. And I know that that's where the top part of this is going to start. And then it's just going to kind of, you're going to have to kind of guess at exactly where it would go behind here on this side because of the angle of it. But usually once you get used to working with linear perspective, it will just kind of make sense about exactly where certain things start and stop. But that's why we're going to be spending some class time on these so that I can help you make sure that you get those sorts of points correct. So now I'm going to erase diagonal lines again. Both M's are in linear perspective now. All I got to, or both O's, excuse me. All I've got to finish now is my N. So this line is going to go behind the O. And then I'm going to use the top edge of my curve here. And then I'm going to still check on this corner because I know it's going to start outside the letter and just go back. This corner, start outside the letter and go back. But if I did this corner or this corner, they would just be inside of my letter. Now here, we've got a bit of a tricky spot because this is going to curve down behind the O once again. So again, I would then have the choice of putting the O in front or the N. I'm going to go ahead and just leave that O in front and let the N just kind of drop down behind it. And then at that diagonal line, my direction is going to switch to go parallel to the front here. And then this curve is going to start about here and be parallel to the front here. Because remember, you're not going to see the side of this part. So this and this do not necessarily connect. You do want this to be thick enough that this makes sense, but they're not going to like touch here or anything like that because they're two separate parts. And then this is going to come across here. And then I know that from that point is where this is going to start to come down parallel to the front. And then this is going to come across parallel to the front here. So that then I'm ready to erase those diagonal lines that I don't need anymore. And then that whole word is now in linear perspective using a vanishing point that is above your word. 
and it would be ready now for outlining, detailing. Since it is the word moon, I could add craters, I could add stars, I could add really anything else that makes sense depending on your visual pun. So if your visual pun is honeymoon, for instance, you could add honey to some of the letters, you could add a honeycomb pattern of hexagons in the front of the letters, and then do the shading using honey colors. You could turn each letter into honey, and you could have it be really drippy looking and really round and flowy. So really, there's a lot of different ways that you can choose to make sure that your word matches and sort of describes your visual pun a little bit more. But once again, the first step is to get your word correctly in linear perspective, because even if your word is very simple, if it's in linear perspective and you have shaded it with a little bit of depth, that's the main requirement. Any further embellishments to your words and letters to match your visual pun, it's just a little bit extra. If you don't have embellishments, it will not count against you. However, if your word is not written correctly in linear perspective, that will count against you. So definitely make sure you get this part down first before you think too much about how you want to decorate or color or shade those letters and words.